You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 11th of April and I'm Will from Milford. The RBA released the monthly monetary policy statement last week. The key focus for the market was the removal of the word patient from the final paragraph of the statement, signalling that the central bank may be happy to raise rates sooner than previously thought. Governor Lowe also noted that over coming months, important additional evidence will be available to the RBA on both inflation and labour costs. This will focus on the inflation data in late April and wage data in mid-May, which the market expects will lead the RBA to hike rates at their June meeting. Financial markets are now pricing 180 basis points of rate hikes this year to see the cash rate at 2% by year end. The US Federal Reserve released the minutes of their March meeting on Thursday, announcing that they will look to sell up to $95 billion a month of their bond holdings. The minutes also noted that many officials would have opted for a 50 basis point rate hike in March if not for the Russian invasion of Ukraine. US government bond yields saw large moves higher again last week, driven by the Fed minutes and earlier comments from noted Fed dove Lael Brainard, who said that inflation was much too high and they would need to reduce the balance sheet quicker than previous cycles. In China, focus remains on the COVID situation where case numbers continue to rise rapidly. China has implemented extremely hard lockdowns, with all of Shanghai's 25 million residents not able to leave their houses. China's zero COVID policy now looks in doubt with over 20,000 new cases a day. However, this is complicated by low vaccination rates amongst the older population. Markets continue to watch closely as lockdowns are likely to affect activity, which could flow through to commodities like iron ore, as well as supply disruption to Chinese exports. Turning to stock news, last week Western areas rejected IGO's takeover bid, following a large jump in nickel prices in recent weeks. An independent expert advising Western areas shareholders recommended that the transaction does not proceed at $3.36, as it is not in the best interests of shareholders. We will now wait to see if IGO will increase their bid or walk away from the deal. Perpetual made a bid last week to merge with rival fund manager Pendle, and a deal that could see the combined entity managing a massive $242 billion. Under the terms, Perpetual would own approximately 52% of the merged company, with Pendle shareholders getting a 39% premium to the pre-deal price and a cash and script deal. Pendle shares ended the week up 18%, while Perpetual shares were down 5%. West Farmers sold down their stake in Coles via a trade worth $500 million at a 1.8% discount on Tuesday night following previous sales in February and March 2020. This leaves West Farmers with an approximate 3% stake in Coles worth about $600 million. Focus this week will be on the US where March inflation numbers are due to be released on Tuesday night. The market expects year-on-year CPI to come in at 8.4% versus 7.9% previously, with monthly inflation rising to 1.2% from 0.8% in February. The UK will also announce their inflation prints for March, with annualised inflation currently sitting at 6.2%. In Australia, the focus will be on Thursday's employment print, with the unemployment rate currently sitting at multi-decade lows of 4%. In New Zealand, the Reserve Bank will announce their interest rate decision, where it is widely expected that they will increase interest rates by 25 basis points to 1.25%. However, some economists think that there is a chance of a 50 basis point hike at this meeting. Thanks for listening. Have a good week.